I just built this awesome workbench, but it is wide open down below, and I really need that for storage. I'm thinking some drawers, at least on this side of this lower cabinet, and then on the end, I can hang some of the clamps and things that I use the most. But maybe the thing I'm most excited about is getting rid of this whole situation. The dust extractor for my sander and the hose that lives over here underneath the wing of my table saw. This is a horrible place for it because it sticks out and it's kind of all janky here anyway. Plus, it's obviously a tripping hazard. <laughs> I'm going to get started by making a box for those drawers that are going to go underneath and I'm going to have a little cool shelf on the top to help catch things that go through these dog holes. You'll see what I mean in just a bit. I've got the panels for the cabinet all cut up and now I'm gonna put them together. And this will be the box that'll just kind of house everything. And then I'm gonna add all the accessories around it. I'm gonna be using pocket hole joinery, so I cut some of those over on the foreman. And now I can put it together. But first of all, look at how big this bench is. I can fit everything on here. This is exactly why I built this. I don't know why I slapped that. I couldn't have done this big of a cabinet on my old workbench without having like a piece of MDF on the top. Where are my clamps? Oh, they're on the floor. Oh. And this is what we're solving today. All right. So I've got a center divider because I want two bays of drawers and then I'm gonna have another piece that goes on top. And this is where the cool little tray will be. So uh, I have the piece also for the front because this is not full depth. And I'll use these two pieces to center up that top shelf, make sure that it is parallel to the bottom. I was just about to screw this thing together and then I saw this. That's just a big, nasty void right in the plywood. And this is the type of thing that will drive me absolutely insane because I like a nice, clean, perfect look. Everything has to be perfect. <laughs> but I'm trying to get better. And we all know mistakes were made and they obviously made a mistake here. So we're gonna leave it, maybe. Now I can just slide in the center divider. I cut a couple spacers and I can just put these in between the side here and then make sure that center divider is right smack dab in the center of both sides. And here's a little trick for clamping the center dividers because it is set back about, I don't know, six inches or so. I can't really put a clamp here and get pressure. So I'll just take a little bit longer board and just wedge it down in there. And now because I have these spacers in here, it will push up against there and be tight and I can screw it in place. All right, I get the carcass all put together. Let's give it a little test fit. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Now I do have this little panel that's gonna fit right inside here. And so still not exactly sure what I'm gonna do, but this should be recessed back there. So I think maybe you could make this into like a little tool wall or maybe even have something else on it. I don't know, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. And while I've got the box down here, I wanna focus on the sander area down here for the mock-up. And so I went ahead and cut a little piece of radiata pine, had this left over from the plywood versus MDF test video. Now if I just slide this in, and I want the hose coming out the front, so I'm gonna stick it in here in the backside. Oh, it does not fit. <sighs> All right, looks like this little piece right here is sticking out too far. So I'm just gonna remove it. There we go. All right. This worked out perfectly. It fits in there so nicely, uh, but I still have this whole thing of hose and the actual sander itself. So I'm thinking I'll make some kind of little hook here, maybe something like this. And I measured the area and I figured out I can put a little board there to keep the hose out of the way and have a little spot for the sander. All right, I've got some parts here and I think they turned out pretty cool. And I just took these measurements and I put them into Easel, which is the design software that runs my X-Carve CNC. And I designed some parts that I could stack together to hold the hose on the side of the bench. Then I took them over to the X-Carve and had the CNC cut them out. And I love using CNC for this type of work for making custom tool holders and such. It is awesome. Now, so here's what I came up with. I have a little base piece and this is solid so I can mount it to the side. And then I cut a bunch of these little spacers, which are just little semicircles. And so as I put these all together, that'll allow me enough room for the hose to sit in. And to make sure it doesn't fall off the end, I made this little uh, guy, which kind of looks like an alien. But when I put it, I realized that uh, it's a little bit too big for the hose. So 
I made this other one that uh, is slightly more offensive, <laughs> but more effective. <laughs> That's what she said. No. And so that way I could just drop the hose right over the top of a single piece. And I think this is going to work awesome. And I also cut out this piece for the sander and this just has a little semicircle in it. And I did route into the back a 45 degree chamfer. And then I put a few quarter inch spacers on the back to hold it off the board so that the sander will fit nicely in there. So now I'm just going to go ahead and glue and me nail these together. And then we can mount everything on the side. I put a little finish on this guy and now I can just screw it in place. <laughs> All right, now let's give it a test fit. Let's see how this guy works. <laughs> yes, that is perfect. It's all out of the way within the bench. The next thing I want to bring to the workbench is my small clamps. I have them all stored over here behind the drill press. They're kind of hard to get to, and I use them all the time. So I want to put them over here on the side. But that's not the whole story. There's more clamps, and I'm embarrassed to show them to you, quite frankly. <laughs> this is one of the best kept secrets on my YouTube channel. And that is what the underside of the old workbench looked like. And here it is. <laughs> Just a hot mess of clamps and bench dogs and work holding. I don't know why I never organized this or built anything down here, but I just never did. But now we're gonna solve it. I'm gonna take all these clamps over and start laying them out and see what we can figure out. All right, we've got a bunch of my clamps up here. I'm sure there's some stragglers around the shop, but this is most of them. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit everything, but I did cut a little sheet that will fit in that exact opening on the side. So what I'm gonna do now is start stacking these on here and just kind of see what kind of layout I can get and see how many I can fit in this space. Okay, after far too long trying to figure out exactly what I wanted on this, I just decided to kiss it instead. That is, uh, keep it simple, stupid. Or was it keep it stupid simple? Whatever it is, I'm gonna make it totally simple and just use a couple one inch dowels. Because what I realized is if I make specific things here, then I don't have a lot of adjustability. But pretty much all of these clamps can just hang right on a dowel rod. So I don't have to have specific kinds in specific places. I can just hang whatever I need to, and then the longer ones can hang down, and I can just scoot ones back and forth, have some long ones there on the side because they weren't really fitting real well in this layout. And if I don't like it, I can always adjust it later. Now this is gonna be a much simpler solution as far as the setup, and to make the brackets, uh, I just got these little guys where I'm going to put the one inch dowel in there, and I did cut these over on the X-carve because it makes stuff like this so fast and easy. So I've got this cut down, and I'm just gonna put the one inch dowel into the holes, now I've got the dowels right in here. There we go. And I will secure these with some screws and now my clamps can sit right on there. All right, let's see how everything fits. See here, the long ones can go down below. Oh, and these even just fit. <laughs> and I can maybe stack these like that. Well, it's not perfect, but I like how much it's holding. You don't have to see as I use it if I need a little bit more headroom in between those lower ones and if I like having these taller ones kind of staggered in between each other down here at the bottom. But for now, this is gonna work great. Now, I'm feeling good about the sides and it's time to attack the drawers. So what I've done is I pulled out some of the things that I think I'm gonna be using the most at the bench, including some sandpaper and this is the 3M extract. That stuff is awesome. I'm sure you've heard about it. Uh, but I have some screws here, some specialty clamps, as well as some clamping squares. So this is just kind of representative of what I might be using at the bench. So what I wanna do is kind of check the heights and then make the drawers specific for what I'm gonna be using it for. So we got maybe three and three quarters. That's also right around three and three quarters. These are just a little bit over three inches and these are only maybe two. So it seems like if I make some drawers that are about four inches deep, that's gonna work really well for here. Now the thing I have to work around is the opening that's already in the cabinet. So that is about 17 inches. So I don't think I could fit four of those four inch drawers in there. So I'm gonna to have to play around. So maybe I'll make that top one even a little bit smaller and have that for some of the thinner things and then have the larger drawers behind it. But I'm gonna play around with the dimensions a little bit and then I'll go over and start cutting some parts. All right, I've got all the parts laid out and they're ready for assembly. And I did decide on doing three drawers, two smaller ones, and then a large one on the bottom. Now, I went ahead and cut all the parts on the table saw, did a little bit of joinery over on the foreman, but I did something a little bit different. I pre-finished everything with a varnish. I used a Total Bolt Halcyon Clear and put it all over everything, including the bottom. And I was a little concerned about doing this because it will be glued to the bottom and I wanna make sure it's a wood to wood connection, but I just left a little strip around there 
that didn't have any finish on it. So I think this is gonna be great. It's gonna save me a lot of time and I don't have to like get all the goopy mess out of the corners anymore. I like this. We do have plans available for the workbench and there's gonna be a combo where you can get the storage as well. Link down in the description if you wanna go check it out. All right, the drawers are ready to go and my voice is a little deeper today because uh, apparently I'm coming down with something, but we'll finish this today and be done. I went with a Goldilocks approach here. I went with a larger drawer for the bottom, kind of that four inch drawer that I had talked about and then an even smaller one for the top. I think that's gonna work out really well. But if you don't know what size to make your drawers like, I've made dozens of drawers and I still kind of waffle when it comes to sizing them. Just, you know, go for it. And you can always remake the drawers if you need to. Uh, not a lot of wood involved in that. So don't feel like you're trapped, just make something and move forward. But now it's time for me to move forward. I'm gonna pull up that cabinet up here and get these guys mounted. I've got some full extension drawer slides here. I cut a few spacers to help me install these along the way. And I'm actually gonna turn this up to make it easier so I don't have to fight gravity, which is a great tip that I picked up from Mark Spagnolo. If you need drawer slides or other things for your projects, you can check them out at Woodcraft, who is the sponsor of today's video. Now, Woodcraft is a woodworking supply and hardware store, and they have everything that you could need to do your woodworking projects. Anywhere from the large machineries all the way down to the hardware, the finishes, and everything in between. Now, you can check them out at over 70 locations throughout the US or online at woodcraft.com if one is is not local to you. A big thank you to Woodcraft. Go check them out if you need something for your next woodworking project. All right, that is the last drawer. These look great. This is gonna be awesome storage. If you wanna know how I install drawers, I've got a bunch of cabinet videos. You can go check them out. I'll have some of them linked down below. You can get all the details on that. But right now, I'm gonna switch over and start making this top drawer, which is gonna be like a, a catch-all tray that I wanna be able to access from both sides. So it's not gonna have drawer slides. It's gonna be friction, and I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do the runners, but I'll start out by making that drawer. Okay, <laughs> change of plans. Uh, I just spent the last hour going through what I'll call a uh, perfectionist spiral, or maybe a death spiral, I don't know, something like that. But I was looking for material to make that top drawer, and I couldn't find any. At least I couldn't find the stuff that I wanted. So for this drawer on top, I would want the grain to match the rest of the drawers. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, thank goodness this is going the right way. No! <laughs> so this is the only piece that is long enough, but the grain is going in the wrong direction. No! <laughs> and having the grain go vertical across that wide span of the drawer just started giving me heart palpitations. And that led to me thinking about that exposed plywood edge, and so I came back and I put edge banding all over it. I just couldn't help myself. Had to do it. So I'm gonna leave this open. It's gonna be a shelf instead of a drawer and I'll see if I like that or not. And I can always add that drawer in later. But in the meantime, on the back side, I've decided I'm gonna do a shelf there. And so I do have this one piece that fits right in there. I'm gonna edge band this guy and then install that. <sighs> It'll make me feel good. And in case you were wondering, it is much, much easier to edge band before you assemble. So if you know you're gonna do it anyway, just do it beforehand. All right, I took the drawers out so I can put in this back piece here. And this should slide right in and register against that center stuff. Let's do a few adjustments and then I can attach it with the screws from the back. I'm gonna put a few pocket holes on the bottom and uh, I got a little spacer. And that's where I'm gonna mount this bad boy. So this should be just enough room to fit some finishes or glue or bottles or even a drill if I wanted to put it somewhere. All right, let's see if I can schlep this thing back down here. Oh, boy, that's heavy. All right, that's a good fit. All right, I secured it in place with some screws. Now I can get the drawers in here and get this thing loaded up. I think I like this shelf, and I just loaded it up with a few random things. Also, this little top shelf, maybe be good for just clamps. Put that in during a glue up and, uh, you know, lose everything you put in there. I did add that power strip, and it's right here on the front, so I can plug in the sander. Now this turned out great, but uh, I wonder what Chuck's gonna think. 
Well, Lati freaking da, he did it. Look at that thing. Where am I supposed to nap? That's pretty cool. I bet he took about three hours to figure that out though. And what's he got on that other side? Look at this, he got six drawers in here. Got a big one, a small one. I bet I could put my Stretch Armstrong right in there. He's even got a sander on there. Well, hey, we're back at you, buddy. If you want to check out how I built this workbench, I got the video queued up for you right there, and we do have plans available for the bench and the storage. A big thank you to the FTBT Builders Club, and until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.